You know, the bloodshed just never ceases when it comes to Israel. At one time, I would have never thought I would have actually taken the stance that I take now. But as I began to examine biblical passages, looking at the scripture, and shockingly beginning to realize how many prophecies really do apply to Israel. Prophecies, though, uh, of a magnitude and prophecies that would uh, just totally alarm you to know that Israel is fulfilling prophecy, not in a good way, but in a very ungodly way. And uh, Netanyahu spearheading, leading the way. Right now, there are protests all over the world. Universities are protesting. Students are protesting. People are in the streets protesting of the genocide that is happening in Gaza. And now, Netanyahu has launched these multiple attacks on Rafa. After he had told the Israeli or the, excuse me the Palestinian people that they could they, that Rafa was the safe zone, go to Rafa. More than thirty-five thousand Palestinians have been killed since October the seventh. And October the seventh, of course, a day that was uh, the most horrendous day for Israelis in modern times, unprecedented, and. Of course, Hamas blamed for every bit of it. But so many questions arise about what really happened and about the disarmament of the settlements all around uh, the Gaza Strip, how their armories were removed, and you know, so many questionable things that yet nobody wants to bring that up. All they want to do is bring up that Israelis were killed, and they were. They were murdered senselessly. But who was really behind that in order to justify this war on Gaza? A war that is leveling the entire uh, province of Gaza completely. And some people like to argue, oh, that's a biblical thing. This is supposed to be happening. Now, Gaza, along with Ashkelon and Ashdod, were to be leveled according to the biblical prophecy. And that's part of Israel. So it can't be a biblical prophecy at all. I was playing some clip here from Al Jazeera. It's a 60-minute warning here. Uh, and before we get much further into this, we'll go ahead and kind of minimize that for now. I want to go into several things here. But disturbingly, we're going to be looking at scriptural uh, evidences. You know, there's one, one, there's one particular one, because I could not help but think of this as I'm seeing that Israel now is hitting Rafa, and it's not going to end with Rafa. It's going to be Lebanon. It's going to be Syria. It's going to be Egypt. There's not going to be any end in sight whatsoever. But this here was found in Egypt, in the little province called Nag Hammadi, where a man stumbled across some ancient documents there, books, in fact, written, for the most part, they were written in the Greek language. Those books were later translated only to find out it was the early believers, the early church writings and documents. Now, I don't hold them as a biblical text per se, but certainly for historicity, they're a very valuable tool. But on this one particular uh, writing here, this one has really made me think of today, modern days, and we're going to really look at it biblically, though, in just a moment as well. It says, before the consummation of the age, in other words, the end of the age, the whole place will shake with great thundering. Then the rulers will be sad. There's a blank spot. Their death. The angels will mourn for, the, for their mankind, and the demons will weep over their seasons. I can't help but think about the seasons. Remember Daniel writing about that they think to change the time or the season and the law, or not the law of the Torah, but 
that law that is a decree that Cyrus, Artaxerxes, and Darius had laid out the decree to go forth and rebuild the temple and restore Jerusalem. That was to be done just before the coming of the Messiah, the Mashiach, which Jesus Christ was that Messiah. And the temple was reestablished. Second temple put back into place and everything. Jerusalem rebuilt for the coming of the Messiah. Everything was set up just for him. But you know, Daniel saw that they would try to change that season, change that time. You know, I did a message on that not too long ago. I'll just quickly jump over there so we can see that there called Think to Change Times and the Law. It's not who or not it, it's not who thought or who you thought is what it should say. I didn't get the title exactly right. But that word dot, dot is a decree. It's a decree by a king, not a law of God, not a Torah or a Torot but a decree by a king. And this message so clearly defines that. At any rate, they're going back to what we're reading here from this particular Nag Hammadi one that also mentions they weep over their season. Could that be, and I'm just speculating here, could that be in light of what Daniel spoke about? They're going to weep over. In other words, they built their third temple. They changed that season because after all, don't forget, it's a beast that Daniel sees in chapter 7. That beast kingdom that thinks they can change the season. Oh, we couldn't have Jesus as the Messiah, so we got a new Messiah coming. But just before that consummation, there's going to be great thunderings and earthquakes and everything else going on, and the angels are these these fallen angels are going to be mourning. They're going to be mourning over there. They're going to weep over their seasons. The mankind will wail and scream at their death. Then the age will begin. And they will be disturbed. Their kings will be intoxicated with fiery sword. Remember I just did the message on the four horse riders? First and second one there. One gets a crown. He's crowned. He's got a bow. The second horse rider there comes out on his red horse with a sword waging war, taking peace from the earth. Well, we have that right here in this writing too. Their kings will be intoxicated with the fiery sword. They will wage war against one another so that the earth is intoxicated with bloodshed. Netanyahu certainly intoxicated with it and Putin right along with him and so is uh, Zelensky. And of course the West for that matter because they're the ones fueling Zelensky. And the seas will be disturbed by those wars. Then the sun will become dark and the moon will cause its light to cease. The stars of the sky will cancel their circuits. That's what's written there. Tell me that's not prophetic. My goodness, I'll tell you what. All right, let's jump in here, though. I want to show some things to you before I jump over to some of these Twitter ones, right? In the book of Matthew, you remember what Jesus did? He indicted. He indicted the Pharisees. Not only did he call them in Matthew 23 a bunch of serpents and vipers here, as we see, you serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Now, who's he talking to? Well, back it up. Woe unto you, verse 29, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You build the tombs of the prophets, garnish the sepulchers of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, Jesus says to them, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up the measure of your fathers. 
Well, who are their fathers? Well, he says they're serpents. They're a generation of vipers. And then he says, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore I send to you prophets, wise men, scribes, some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Didn't say anything about scourging them in their churches. But he goes on to say in verse 35 as he indicts them, that upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Bacchaeus, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. All the bloodshed. No wonder then in Revelation when we read here, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. Thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Who could it be talking about then in Revelation chapter 16 other than Israel? The Pharisees, the descendants of the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago, because according to Nehemiah Gordon, the Pharisees of today are the Orthodox rabbis. He said you can't be an Orthodox rabbi unless you can prove your ancestry to the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago. I don't know how they do it, but that's what he said. I believe also Tovia Singer also makes a very similar assertion. Let's see what it does say here, though, a little bit. First went and poured out his vial, the angels, that is, upon the earth, and there fell a noisome, grievous sore upon men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as blood of a dead man. Remember, the seas are troubled by all the bloodshed, according to that Nag Hammadi writing. Every living soul died in the sea, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, which was, and shall be, and because thou hast judged us, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Who shed the blood of prophets, saints and prophets? The ones that are getting all this torment. Well, according to Matthew, Jesus says right here, Wherefore, behold, I send to you prophets and wise, wait, I'm sorry, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Barcaeus, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. All the righteous blood shed. What did he also say? Up here in verse 29. Woe to you, scribes and hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Wow. Then he indicts them. So then Revelation 16 can only be talking about the Pharisees of today. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God, almighty, true, and righteous are thy judgment. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Men were scorched with great heat and blasting the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. The fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and the kingdom of it was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Sixth angel poured out his vial on the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Remember I shared with you that one day from Zechariah's prophecy? After you find out that it's the king of the Negev and he works with the king of the north. But tidings out of the east and out of the north affrighten him. And then the three unclean spirits like frogs. They're not frogs, but they're like frogs. Come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They're reptilians though, aren't they? 
For they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth, the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Think about it, friends. You need to really do some seriously thinking about this one here. Let me share some things here with you. This is in Rafa. This was about 12 hours ago here. Um, you know, bombing Rafa again, right? And no, I don't believe in the Allah Akbar thing there. That's just another religious thing there but you know uh, they're entitled to believe what they want to believe that's that's the beauty of freedom of religion right here are the journalists on, here near rafa journalists constantly being targeted i forget how many journalists have been killed by israeli uh snipers included and everything bombs etc it's horrible absolutely horrible i'm going to come play this israeli she was in an interview uh she was uh she's a, a human rights lawyer and Inter interrupts her own al jazeera interview for a tearful plea condemning israel's war on gaza and israelis attacking aid trucks headed for gaza I want to play this for you in just a moment, but before I do, I want to play for you this man right here, Douglas McGregor. I think he is a, a retired lieutenant colonel, if I'm not mistaken, but I want you to hear a little bit about what he says here regarding Netanyahu's war on Gaza. Listen to this here. Mr. Netanyahu over the weekend told uh, an Israeli news outlet when he was asked how long the war could take said he thought it could take 10 years. I mean, is that realistic, or is that how long he wants to stay in power? Well, the power question I can't answer. I'm sure he'd be happy to be appointed for life. But uh, I, I don't think it's a matter of can it last that long. I think it's more along the lines of signaling to everyone that he's not going to stop until he's comfortable that he's achieved his goals and aims. And I still don't think anyone has been straightforward about those aims. Uh, this has nothing to do with what happened on 7 October. 7 October was uh, horrific, although, again, lots of people like me question just how it occurred and how it came about because of the extraordinarily good uh, surveillance and security that is normally around Gaza. One wonders why they put this uh, music festival in such close proximity to a place that was clearly not uh, reinforced with Israeli defense forces. Uh, they had a minimum of uh, ready deployable forces in the region. Why would you do that? So I think there are lots of questions that have to be answered on that score. I simply think that what happened on 7 October was used to ex justify something that uh, the Israelis have wanted to do for years, which is to complete what they started in 48 and what continued to some extent in 56 and later on in the 60s, which is to completely rid itself or rid Israel of its Arabs. That's what this is about. I, I don't understand why nobody will simply step forward and admit that. I guess if God bless that colonel for having the courage to make that statement. That's exactly right. Now, this here is an Israeli uh, and she is, I think she is Iraqi descent. Her family is. I like the way John Moore often puts it when we're talking. He says the real Jews versus the fake Jews. This is one of the real ones. Listen to what she says here. Chris, Lewis, Kurt, Amran, thank you for speaking to us from Tel Aviv and if sharing your experience. Say, if I may just to say, it's, it's something that it's important to me to say as an Israeli, as a Jew. We have this command in Judaism, you should not stand over the blood of your neighbor. And for me, I don't see the Palestinians and the Gazans as my neighbors, as tears as my own people. And I say it with tears because what happened today, what happened yesterday do not represent many Israelis and many Jews. I came, my family is Iraqi. They are Iraqi Jews. When I see grandmothers and grandfathers in Gaza begging for food, I see them. I see them in my own eyes. And this is not something that we, we oh, condemn gosh. it and we have to stop it. And this is our moral obligation to fight with our own people, with our own blood, in order to tell them what you're doing is wrong. 
we have to stop this war. We cannot let this bloodshed continue. And I'm saying it because I know that I will pay prices talking with you right now. I will pay prices and I'm getting threats and death threats and people trying to locate where I live right now in order to attack me because I was there yesterday. But I will keep organizing more people in order for them to come and to fight and to tell this is not our Judaism. This is not the society that we are to live in. There are many Israelis that want peace and pursuing peace for us, for our children, and, and for everyone that living in this land, by God, by morale, by love. And it's important that you will hear our voices and to know that we are doing as much as we can with this horrible government in order to resist. It's hard, we're paying prices. I was attacked yesterday and, and I'm with scars and, 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 and bruise all over my body, but I did it and I don't regret it and I will do it again and again and again because we have to. It's, it's the least that we can do in order that what's happening in Gaza in order to stop this war and to prevent the other one. God bless Thank her you. heart. God bless this woman's heart. That is a real Jew. She is a real Jew and a hero of Israel. That's the way it should be. That's the way Christians should stand. You know, and they even show, they even show, I want you to see this. They were even showing, let me find, there it is, right? There she is there filming the Orthodox community destroying the food aid. Destroying it. And then, of course, they realized what she was doing, and they began to attack her. More Israelis do need to stand up. But I know it's a heavy price to pay. Very sad. Listen, in closing, I want to share some things with you real quick. Um, we're going to just briefly, I want to just share with you a testimony uh, that that was, we were on John Moore's program the other day, and uh, you could actually go there and listen to this on uh, his website. If you go to the libertyman.com, uh, you were to go to his audio uh, files there, his uh, RBN archives is what you'll click on. That'll bring you right here. On the 14th of May, which was Tuesday, the first hour there, um, Brother Lee Holt, came on and shared his testimony. Now, Brother Lee follows our ministry here, but his testimony was so riveting. And I didn't even know this. I knew part of his testimony. I didn't know all of this. I want to share this with you because I don't promote LifeWave because of a money thing. I promote it because I see hundreds of people being helped. And and listen, if you're listening and you're using this product, you're you you you've gone and you've decided because you can do it any way you want to do it. You can just be a customer, preferred customer, preferred customer plus which you earn points doing that, or you could be a distributor if you want to be a distributor. You don't have to be a distributor. And by the way, you can be a distributor and just and you know, cuz some people worry about, "Oh my gosh, you multi-level marketing you don't even have to do that we've got doctors that are doing this all they do is they carry the product and they just do retail only it's amazing the ways you could make you could earn money if you choose to do that what i'm encouraging you to do though is to try x39 it is non-transdermal it will change your life i have had personal family members myself included that it's just done amazing things for us. And it doesn't end with just X39. If you have EMF issues that you're dealing with, use X39, X49 together. People that are suffering from EMF uh, issues there are getting help by doing that. Uh, but anyway, X39 stimulates your stem cells. Listen to Ron Gunter and what he had to say here on John's program here. Uh, one of our LifeWave uh, customers, Mr. Lee Holt. Good morning, Lee. 
Hey, good morning, John. How are you? Real good. Uh, I understand you have an amazing story to tell us about. Uh, please can, uh, let us know what you got for us. Okay, sure. Um, a lot of my my improvement occurred within the last, I mean, within the first month. Uh, and then it leveled out, but it was just amazing. Within, uh, I started on December the 10th under uh, Stephen and Yana Benun. And um, on, uh, I got uh, the patches, I think, on the December the 10th. And I put them on, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not kidding. Within two to three hours, the hip joint pain that I had from sitting uh, to standing, uh, after I've been sitting a while and be standing, uh, about the first 10 steps, I, I was walking like almost like the, the old man that I am. But within two to three hours, I noticed that the, my joint, my hip Lee, pain, Lee, by the way, joints, 69. had subsided. And there was, and also uh, my lower back pain. I was supposed to have had a a, a, a surgery where I fused my lower uh, lumbar vertebrae, uh, three, four, and five. I fused them together right. with rods and screws. And uh, right. no, no, I don't have to do that now. I'm back to lifting anything I want to. Of course, I lift properly, and so my back pain was gone within just all this. The hip and the back pain was gone the first two to three hours. In a couple of days, I had been where I I, I heat my house with wood. And uh, uh, going up into the uh, flu, <clears throat> it's kind of got some rough edges on it. I had scratches all over my hands, but I noticed within two to three days that the scratches and the cuts and the little small wounds, they weren't big, but, they, but I noticed they, that the healing accelerated and was gone within two days. And <laughs> let's, let's move on to about 10 days. And within 10 days, I noticed that my brain fog uh, was, was lifting. And I had more energy, and my days were extended. In other words, I couldn't wait to go to bed at 7 o'clock at night. Now, I was at, now I'm able to stay up 10 or 11 or like later if I need to. And, and well, tell us, no Lee, problem. how old are you? I'm, I'll be, I'm 69. I'll be 70 in, uh, in uh, November. Okay. All right. Wow. That's good. Uh -huh. And then Turn it's going to Turn right. chicken, John. Yeah, well, it's, it's all uh, relative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. And then, so I told you, you know, about my energy. And then it, within three weeks, I, I've had chronic sinusitis for a long time, and it started to clear up, and it got much better. Four weeks, I had irritable bowel syndrome flare ups about two to three times a week. And man, let me tell you, that was that was a very inconvenient thing to have. And now it's it's been reduced to maybe once a month, if, if that often. So that's wow. a more some more things also. Uh, my prostate, I used to have to get up two or three times a night to go to the restroom. Now I get up zero to maybe one time at all, if, if at all. I mean, I mean, it blows me away. You know, this is, this is why I'm so passionate about this product, guys. I mean, yes, we are a distributor. It's a, listen, you want to help support this ministry? If you, you just go to our website, because listen, it's going to help you as well. That's the beauty of it. It's going to help you. And, and in the process of helping you, it'll bless us as well. Uh, you can go there. You can, you can do it by shop. You can just go in there and shop. You could, you could order the X39. Uh, you know, if you become a preferred customer, which puts you on auto ship there, you get a $50 discount every month on it, or $49.95 discount. So I think it's $99.95. Well, it's actually $50. So definitely do auto ship, all right? If you don't do auto ship, yeah, I make more money, but I, I'm not interested in making more money. I want you to get blessed and save money, all right? So definitely do the auto ship. David Schmidt recommends that you do this for one month for every decade of your life. So if you're 60 years old, do it for six months. At least give it six months. You know, you can cancel at any time. It's easy to cancel. Uh, you know, I would recommend the X39, X49. X49 is fabulous. It's also great for, like I said, EMF. Uh, it's the X39 re, uh, stimulates your stem cells. So that's like the master patch. It's the best thing you could ever use for anything and everything. So I really encourage you to get that. And uh, but if you want, if you're thinking that you may end up sharing this with other people, then what I would recommend then is don't order it as a customer. Come in here and join as a distributor. 
uh, because as a distributor, you get product for everything that you're paying for. Minimum be a silver. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly show you. If you go, if you become a gold member, which is 500 bucks to be a gold member, uh, the one thing about being a gold member is that uh, you can earn money four ways in the company. You could be just a regular distributor uh, and nothing to do with multi-level marketing like, like so many doctors. We've got several doctors that have joined in with us that are also promoting the products for their patients, etc. But when you when you get that, they, they pre-select this for you. Like they give you five LifeWave patch boxes. That's $500 by itself. But then they give you that Alavita patch. That's a $50 uh, uh, patch as well, or, or sleeve of a patch, or a month's supply, I should say. So it's like you get... Uh, you're getting $550 worth of products for $500, and you become a distributor to where you could earn income from this right from the beginning. And listen, we just met a bunch of people in, in Navarre when we had a little conference there. They don't have platforms like me at all and or John Moore, and these people here are doing much better than I am financially with this. That's just because they're passionate about sharing it. And I'm passionate about sharing it as well. Quickly, though, let me just show you one thing, though. You could exit out of what's in that box, right? And then you could even exit out that Ala Vita one there. And then what you can do with that $500 is you can go in there and you can create your own order of patches by looking at everything that the company has. So you're not limited to just what they say. Definitely you want the X39 though, right? So you'd scroll down, you'd want to get that X39. Um, you know, you definitely, I would get the X49 though as well. And if you'll notice, the screen lights up until it gets to green. When it's at green, you got your full, your cart's full, right? Maybe you get, you're, you're married, get another X39 for you and your wife. If you're dealing with a situation of, um, uh, we'll say, uh, oh, let me go back up real quick. Let me find it. Um, let's say dementia. Somebody in your loved one in your family has got dementia. Go ahead and get a carnosine order as well. Because carnosine, in the studies that have been done, it removes the, the aluminum from the, from the body, which detoxes the brain, and it has helped Alzheimer's patients. Unbelievable. My aunt perfect witness of that. Uh, also, let's say glutathione. I love glutathione. Increases the glutathione in your body, causes your body to make glutathione. No synthetic, no drugs. That's a non-transdermal patch. Put that rascal on the top of your left foot there, and it's going to help detox your liver. Put it on your thyroid. We know of one sister, beautiful testimony, her thyroid is functioning properly now. Using glutathione and X39, right? And then you've got other things in here. Let's say Eon. Eon is amazing for inflammation. Uh, it reduces the inflammation in the body. Now, see, I've just put all these patches in there already. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got six boxes of patches and still got room for more, right? And that's at a gold member level. All right, well, let's just say because X39 is so important, you want to add another X39. I just completed the, the cart. I got seven packages of patches instead of six. So that's what you can do by customizing your cart. Check out, and hey, if you need any help, email us. benoonx 39 at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description below as well as our link. And we thank you for being supportive of this ministry. God bless you.